came back and he didn't go back to school, but I did because I wanted to finish high school and I go to college, but instead, like I said, I ended up getting married. Who was your uncle? Uncle uh, Reynaldo Montano. Reynaldo Montano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That was from the family, uh, Montano family, which yeah. my, my grandparents. And he served in Europe? In Europe, and he served in the infantry, but I don't, I don't remember what uh, unit he was with. Okay. But uh, he was also in the infantry. I think uh, most of us Mexicans were put in the infantry because we didn't have the uh, uh, knowledge, you know, to uh, like to put us in uh, in the quartermaster or stuff like that, you know. So where you have to have s some, and I, I knew that's why they sent us to the because a lot of the ones that that we had in the infantry were Mexicans. Was it all? Was there a lot of Mexicans? Were oh, there yeah, other? Sure. Were there other? Was it a, a kind of a big mixture of people? Yes, it was a, a mixture, but uh, the uh, the thirty uh, third infantry division didn't have very many Mexicans, so that, that helped me to uh, with my English, you know. So, thank God for that. So. Okay, so you were drafted your sophomore year. Yeah. You said. Mm -hmm. And um. And uh, your branch of service was the Army. Yeah. And you were in the uh, 136th Infantry right. Regiment. Mm -hmm. in Battery Com A. Battery A. No, uh, Company A. Company A. Yeah. Battery is artillery, and uh, infantry is a uh, uh, company. Company A, 136th in Infantry. Okay. Um, yeah. And I, w I was looking at your. Um, your papers here, and it says mm -hmm. that you entered service on July 30th, 1943, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting because today is July 30th. I'll be done. That's right, right didn't it? Yeah. So oh, it's kind of an interesting <laughs> coincidence. I hadn't noticed that. Yeah. I'll be done. And so you remember, I didn't even remember what date it was today. So um, mm -hmm. where did you enter service at? At uh, like I said, they sent us to California to. Uh, uh, I think it was Fort Ord, California. Yeah, Fort Ord, and, and from there, uh, that's where I took my advanced training. And from there, they sent us to New Guinea. And that's where I joined the 33rd Infantry Division in New Guinea. It was an island, just uh, no barracks, no nothing. We slept in tents. And sometimes if, if, if it rained too hard, we didn't even put up our tents. We just threw the tents over us, you know, because we didn't have a chance to make uh, the tents. Because we, you're moving every, 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 uh, every night. You move at night so that nobody can contact you. you know, so. Right. Uh, what was your military specialty? Just an infantry, a, a rifleman. Mm -hmm. Were you were you a, a good shot? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because he had all those athletic skills, I wondered if that transferred over. Uh, well, the. Uh, now, what was that you wanted? That. Oh, I was just asking what the military specialty was, and you said you were a rifleman. Yeah, rifleman. Yeah, the others, uh, because they had machine gun, and a rifle, and and and, and mortars too. Those that you, you know what a mortar is, you put it in and. <laughs> And so I was a rifleman. Well, those are the ones that are in the front, and those others are to behind us, because they just to protect protect them and protect the rest of the units, you know. So. How did you feel about being a rifleman? I liked it. Mm -hmm. What was it that you liked about it? Firing a rifle. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how many I killed or, or hit, but. Uh, I know I used it quite a bit, and used to carry our our ammunition on and on our leave uh, fatigues, you know, with the big pockets. If, if we ran out of ammo, we had to go to the back and get some. <clears throat> Can you describe a little bit more about what it was like to be on New Guinea? Uh, well, from New Guinea, we went to. Uh, from there we went to the Philippine Islands, and uh, I was in Luzon, 
Philippine Islands when the war ended. And uh, uh, they gave us a tour of it before we got real involved and, and uh, took us to the one of the Catholic church there and it was just all bombed on. But uh, they, uh, they were rebuilding it by the time we got there. And it's, the churches were so big, I'm telling you. And uh, we would go in with the, with the civilians there. And they treated us real nice. They bowed. I said, you don't have to do that. No. But, but we were protecting their land, see, so. And, uh, do you remember uh, what the date was when you actually came to New Guinea? Mm. Was it in in forty three or forty four? No, it, it's it had to be forty forty three, because from there, like I said, we went to New Guinea, and and that's where we uh, that's where I joined the thirty third thirty sixth infantry division there, and my my memory is that's okay. <laughs> And then, how how long were you on New Guinea for? Do you remember how long it was? In in, in New Guinea? Yeah, how long? Uh, just about maybe three or four weeks, until they found a uh, a unit that that needed us, you know. So that's where we joined them in 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 in, in, in New Guinea, and then from there we went to to the Philippine Islands. Do you remember what it was like traveling from New Guinea to the Philippine Islands? Mm. No, because we uh, by boat, you know, at night, and uh, everything was dark. We couldn't even open the windows; just look outside. I I can't remember. Maybe the ships were real slow in getting there, because they were going like this. You know, they they don't go straight because they. The planes can get you, uh, bombers. You know. And anyway, where were we? In New Guinea? Yeah, well, you were talking about the trip over on the boat. Oh, it yeah. It was at night, and you were going to the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah, and you said the boat was kind of weaving yes, like this because they didn't want to get we bombed. Got, we got there, and then uh, um, from there we go a little bit at a time until, I think uh, until hit, we hit... Uh, um, that, that when we went there, we got end, ended up in Luzon in the Philippine Islands. Can you tell me about what did you think about Luzon when you arrived there? It was real poor. I mean, the poor. The, the, see, the Japanese had bombed them too, and uh, some some of their um, built, even the the church the churches were bombed. I mean the. Catholic churches and all, all other big buildings, because the Japanese went in there and bombed the Philippine Islands. So that's how come we ended up going over there too. Okay. And uh, what else? Uh, were you involved in any invasions? Just the one going to, uh, to the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And then. Like I said, I was there maybe about six months, and then we we were sent to uh, Kyoto, Japan, for Army of Occupation. And, and the people there treated us real nice, and we felt so sorry for them because all their buildings were bombed, you know, and that's it. and the the barracks that we went to. Had never been bombed, and it were, they were Japanese uh, uh, barracks that they had. So, can you describe Kyoto? Mm, uh, it was a it was a big city, uh, but you know what? It was bombed. I I may have some I I have some pictures there uh, that uh, that I'll show you later. But it, it was really bombed real bad. But the people treated us real nice. 
They even bow their little heads. You don't have to do that, you know. Now, now when you... And then we, uh, like, a, they had a big Catholic church there. And I didn't think they had any Catholics there. Well, they, we went to Mass there, and they all were real nice people. And a big Catholic church. And, and then they started giving us uh, a Mass for us and then for them. So, you know, so they could do it in their language. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, when you were on Luzon... Um, are we okay? Right. Is she still bothering you? She's she's still barking a little bit. Um, well, is that is it okay or? Let me see if Sorry. I can take the microphone with you. Let's see if I can get him out. <laughs> um, okay. I'll see. If <laughs> Which one's uh, barking? Are you refining your? Uh, Equipment. Huh? Huh? You always have like a new this little like, kind of set up every oh. time. It's like, what's Ernest going to have this Did time? Shall I, <laughs> stuff out. I put him outside? I like or it. Can they bring him in here? Do you like this setup? Huh? Yeah, it's a I think that's that's it's working so They're far. interviewing me and they're firing so the camera. Anything. Can they bring him in here for a little while? So, what are you doing? Huh? I mean, what's I'm going straight to hard Straight drive. to hard drive. I have a tape back. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We're taking Four care of a, yeah. a dog that my uh, So uh, going back to Luzon uh -huh. for a minute, um, and you were involved with that, um, <clears throat> can you describe what it was like, um, I guess, being part of that battlefront on Luzon? I mean, were you ever under enemy fire? Like, oh, what yeah, was the experience? Yeah, yeah. Can you describe that a little bit? Well, like infantry, you know, you're out there in the in the open, and uh, you hear bullets going here, or they hit a tree, or something like that, and you all you have to do, you're, you're always on, almost on the on the ground on the, with a rifle like that. You don't stand up too much unless you're behind a tree or something, and you know, but the trees weren't that wide, so. But it's uh, the infantry is where you. Those are the people that uh, suffer the most, actually, because you're in, you're in. When you start out, you go like this, so many, and, and maybe so many apart, like that, and you're moving forward, and you're moving all. Of, and sometimes you, you get to go like that, where you, where the land or water is comes out, you know. So, and then you have to go again somewhere. But, uh, and there in those jungles, that water is, because it rains almost every night, or every day, actually. Oh, shit. Excuse me. Hello? Hello? Yes? Fine. Mm, I, you know what, I, I can't hear too good here. Uh-huh. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just go ahead and send one. It doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. A check. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Business. Mm-hmm. No. Oh. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay, bye. Next, I'm going to build a little case so that I can hey, Donation. I get that every day in the mail. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, going back to Luzon, um, mm -hmm. you talked about kind of what it was like being in the jungle and, and being part of the infantry. Mm -hmm. um, were there any, what were some of the hardships that you encountered while you were there mm. in the jungle? I guess the heat, the heat was one of them, and the, the and, and it's, uh, oh, what is it, wet, uh, what is it? Some kind of rot, right? The jungle. You so. sweat so much in everywhere that, in the Philippines, I was, a, that was one of the problems, it was real hot, and you have to wear the the fatigues and they're heavy to begin with you know so and then you're carrying your pack in the back and your rifle and then ammunition so th that was a that was a hardship right there in the, in itself just carrying the ammunition and and then you've got those combat boots too and they're heavy but they're thank god for the <laughs> the snakes they they, they wouldn't be able, with these they could get you, you know, but with a, with a combat boots that they go up to here, they did that for our protection too, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. but other than that, it was just a, um, I would say just like a, it's a jungle actually, that's the only thing. Was it, um, was it? Frightening, or did you have any kind of emotions about being in the infantry and being on the front line like that? No, but I, I was scared all the time. <laughs> I, I I prayed more, I think, then than than I than I even do now. I think. But uh, now, were you ever captured? No. Nope. Did you ever capture anyone? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, what did you think about your commanding officer? Oh, he was a fine man, I'll tell you. He, he was a real nice man. And I got to see him uh, one more time. Because like I said, we flew back, my wife and I flew back to Illinois for a convention that they had. And uh, But they hold their convention in Wisconsin. That's where they hold their, their conventions. So I went. we went a couple of times, my wife and I. Because we had some friends over there too in Quincy, Illinois. Our friends, they used to come and spend the, uh, the uh, winters over here. They used to come and sp uh, spend winters here in Chandler. We, we, we'd go to our church and and uh, we'd go out to eat all the time. We ate mo most of the time out when they were here. So. What do you remember about, about the men that you served with? The men that we, I said, with, they were all real nice people. In fact, when I, when I first got there, I, I was one of the first. Uh, I, I first, I think, I was the only Mexican in the in the uh, in a company A, and then we got about seven more later before we we went to uh, uh, the Philippine Islands. And we were in the Philippine Islands when, when uh, the war ended. And from there, like I said, I, I ended up in Kyoto, Japan for four and a half months and I was sent home. And I was home, like I said, maybe three or four days. And I went back to school because the government was paying us $47 a month for going to high school. Mm. That was a lot of money in those days. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you were on Luzon, were mm -hmm. you wounded at all? No. You never were no. wounded, even though you Thank were on God the front line. Wow. Did you Did you see other men in oh, your yeah. company get yeah. wounded? I had, I, I had three friends that were killed in the same... See, when the infantry, you go and, and, and you lay down uh, like a wall, but you're separated like that. And... Uh, they they were shot. Evidently, they were they were out in the, in the open when they killed them. 
because you get behind a tree or something like that, the trees were that wide, you know, so jungles, that's all it is, is jungles. N no trails at all, hardly any trails at all. How did you feel about the people that you were fighting, like the Japanese? Well, then we were, we didn't like them, but like I said, when we got back, when we got to Japan, they were so nice. I mean, they even bowed at us and all that. And they, didn't, they didn't have to do that, even and, uh, in church. I didn't know we had that many Catholic Filipinos there, <laughs> but the church, like I said, it's I, I think maybe even our, our church is pretty big here now, but, but it, it, it wasn't as, as big as the ones that they had over there in, Luz, in Manila. Um, what are some of your strongest memories of your experiences during the war? What memories stand out most for you about being in the war? Mm, I try not to think of any of them, you know, but, but uh, it's... Uh, I remember the ones that, the friends that were killed, you know, that were real good friends. And uh, I, I contacted some of their families when we got home and wrote them, because I had their addresses and all. And they were so nice to return my, uh, in, in a note, you know, saying that. And, and thank, and he says, and we thank God that the good Lord brought you back, and all that. That's a tough. Very religious people. Mm -hmm. Not all Catholics, you know, but uh, they were all. We were there, uh, Catholics, Mormons, and all of them. But uh, we were. And and anything else? I like the picture that I have there. You can look at it. Okay. Now, on, uh, on VE Day, mm -hmm. when, uh, when uh, Germany surrendered, uh, were you in the Philippines at that time? I was still in the service. Yeah. My, you know what? Believe it or not, this uncle of mine, I got there in the morning, and in the afternoon, he came in from Europe. He was in the infantry also. But he got wounded, and he was... We didn't know it, but he was not supposed to have gotten married. He got married, and they had one kid, and he died when the little the little girl was uh, four months old. He was not supposed to get something. He was wounded somewhere. And, and, In other words, so he was not supposed to, but he didn't tell anybody. He found out later. So he was very young. No, he was just about a, about a year and a half older than me. He had finished high school, but I left right after my sophomore year. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, where were you on VJ Day? VJ Day. I was still in, in the service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were in the mm -hmm. Philippines. But I, when I came, uh, no, we were in the, uh, in Kyoto, Japan then, because oh, I went there for four and a half months, and then I was sent home, and I was home three or four days, and I went back to school, and I, that's how I come. I graduated with a class of uh, forty-five with Corley Haggerton. Mm -hmm. Do you remember uh, how you felt when they announced that the war was over? Oh God. I never drank, but I drank that night. We had free beer, pot, what do you want? But I drank beer. And now I don't care for beer. I'll eat, I'll drink a couple of margaritas and that's it, but that, that's it. Mm -hmm. okay. But I've never been a, a heavy drinker or anything, so. When did you return to the U.S.? Uh, I'll have to look at I think it's in the, in my discharge. Oh, I have it here. Yeah. I'll, I can go ahead and read that for you. Yeah, it's in there. It says, uh, yeah, here. Yeah, right there, huh? Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, you can go ahead and sit down. <laughs>
Like I said, my memory is. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So that, just for the record, that's January 29th, 1946, mm -hmm. when you were discharged. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I was home two or three, three days or something like that, and went back to high school. Mm -hmm. how, did that, how did that feel, going back to high school? It felt good because, uh, like I said, we were getting $47 a month for going to high school, mm -hmm. and we could eat at the cafeteria and all that, but you know what? I still went home all the way down the street, came and ran back and ate, went home to eat <coughs> lunch over there. And that was a long ways in those days, but there were not that many buildings or nothing. You, know, you could just go across the street on, onto the high school. Okay. Now, um, you said that you were in what medals or honors did you earn as part of your service? Well, you get the uh, the uh, loose on. Uh, I think it says here, and you can just hang out there for a second. I think it says here that you um, you yeah, received they, the American Campaign Medal, yeah, mm -hmm. the Asiatic Pacific Asiatic, Campaign uh -huh. Medal, the Philippine Liberation. Liberation. Medal. And the, the Good Conduct Medal yeah. and a World War II Victory Medal. Right, and then. Uh, and then you got the Bronze Star. And then my Bronze Star. I, when I left, they told me, "You've been turned in for the Bronze Star." I says, "What? What did I do?" Right. Anyway, you know when I got, when I got it. Ten years later. I got some articles there that that were in the Channel, Arizona. And maybe you might want to look at them and, and see what. Yeah. Yeah. But that's an. And then, uh, like I said, uh, Ron Leverett was a good friend of ours. He was a, our softball manager for the Hay Baders. And uh, so when we were at. And he got me in the National Guard, too. So when I went to, uh, to Fort Pachuca. Uh, he found out that I had gotten the bronze star because I didn't tell anybody. But 